Hi, I'm Ellen from The Chili Dog. If you've ever knit a flap and gusset style sock heel, you know that it's very easy to get an unsightly gap or hole right here at the top corner of the gussets. Oftentimes, knitters will pick up and knit an extra stitch or two in between the heel flap and the instep stitches. Today, I'm working on a pair of Riptide socks, and I'd like to show you another alternative that's similar to a method I use to avoid underarm gaps in top-down sweaters. I'll include a link to that video in the description below. Let's get started. Whenever you're knitting a flap and gusset style heel, gaps can form right here on either side in between where you pick up the stitches on the sides of the flap for the gusset and the instep stitches. So before I start picking up my gusset stitches, I'm going to do a little bit of prep work. I'm going to use two cable needles, so this is a little bit easier for you to see and for me to manipulate. This is the first side of the sock where I'm going to be picking up stitches, so this is the first gap that we're going to take a close look at. And we're looking for something very specific in this gap. We want to find the top horizontal strand of yarn that runs from the flap to the instep and goes through one stitch. And that top strand is right here. So I'm going to take my cable needle and I'm going to insert it underneath that top strand from the front to the back. Then that strand goes through a stitch right here and I want to pick up the same strand on the other side of that stitch. And it can be a little bit tricky to see. But it's right there. So I found the top strand of yarn that runs from the flap over to the instep and goes through one stitch in between them. Once I have it picked up, I'm just going to slide it down onto my cable needle and we will deal with it later. Now let's look at the other side of the sock, the other gap. And again, we're looking for the top horizontal strand that leads from one side to the other and goes through a stitch at the center in between the instep and the flap. This very top horizontal strand of yarn doesn't fit the bill because although it runs across from one side to the other, it continues on across the back of the flap and it doesn't run under a stitch here in between. So we are going to go down to the next horizontal strand. This one runs in between and it goes through this stitch here in between the instep and the flap. So that's the strand that we want to deal with. So I'm going to go under that strand from the back or from the front to the back and then come back up the other side from the back to the front. And you can see that's the top horizontal strand that runs between the instep and the flap that also is caught here in the center with a stitch. So again, we will just hold that in place with our cable needle. And now that we have those two problem areas marked, I'm ready to start picking up my gusset stitches on the sides of the flap. As I began picking up the stitches on the first side of the flap, I can see here this first stitch up on my right needle comes out of this lower stitch, so I can't pick up any stitches there. I'll continue on down the side of the flap. And a lot of people will pick up their flap stitches under both legs on the edge. I actually prefer only to go under one. I just find I get a little bit better results. 
So I'll just go under the back leg of those edge stitches. And I also like to use a different needle in my left hand to pick up the stitches and then the needle in my right hand to actually knit the stitches. So I've picked up the first one. I'll continue on down the edge, pick up the next leg, I split my yarn, and then go ahead and knit the stitch. And I'm going to continue on down the flap until I only have one more stitch to pick up and knit. I have one more stitch to pick up here at the end of my heel flap, and this is where the magic happens. Instead of just picking up that stitch and knitting it, instead I'm going to pick it up and work it together with this first pesky gap stitch to tighten everything up. And I'm going to work those two stitches together if they, as if they were an SSK, a slip slip knit, which is a decrease in slants to the left. So it's going to point towards this problem area. Instead of picking up that back leg of the stitch from the front to the back like I have been, I'm going to use my cable needle and pick up that back leg from the back to the front. So this is almost as if we had already done the slip slip part of the SSK because now both of these first two stitches are reverse mounted with the leading leg at the back. So now all we have to do is go ahead and knit those two together through the back loop to go ahead and close things up. And then once I do that, I can drop those first two stitches off of my cable needle and I have one horizontal strand here left on the cable needle. So we're done with the heel flap. I'm going to turn things here so that we can get to the instep stitches. And now again, instead of just working across our instep stitches, we're going to go ahead and work that first instep stitch together with this lifted strand that's on the cable needle as if we were doing a knit two together, which again is a decrease that's going to slant towards the right and it's going to point towards that problem area. So we'll lift the stitch up onto our right needle and then we can go ahead and knit those first two together. Now, once the problem area on the first side of the sock is taken care of, I can go ahead and just work across my instep stitches in pattern until I get to one stitch before the end of the instep. I have one instep stitch left. And again, this is where the magic is going to happen and we're going to close up that gap. So I'm going to work together my instep stitch with that first pesky gap stitch as if they were an SSK or a decrease that slants towards the left, towards the problem area. So I'm going to slip the instep stitch knit wise. And then I'm actually just going to transfer it without twisting onto the cable needle. That's just like the first part of the SSK. And then I can knit those two stitches together through the back loop. I'm just checking to make sure that I hadn't split my yarn there. And then I can go ahead and drop that off of the needle. And now we just have this one last problem to take care of. We're also ready to start picking up our stitches along the other side of the heel flap. So I'm going to use my knitting needle here to pick up that first stitch on the side of the flap. Again, I'm just going under one leg, that furthest back leg and picking it up. And then I'm going to work that picked up stitch and our problem stitch together as if they were a knit two together. So I'm going to transfer without twisting from the cable needle onto my knitting needle. And then I'm going to knit those two stitches together. And again, this is a decrease that slants to the right towards the problem area. 
And once that decrease is made, I'm ready to continue picking up my stitches along the edge of the flap. So again, I'll use my left needle to pick up that back leg of the stitch and then knit it with my right needle. Then pick up a leg with the left needle and knit it with the right needle all the way across my heel flap. I've worked the first few rounds of my gusset so that we can take a very close look at what has happened here on our two potential problem areas. So we'll start over here and zoom in. And I'll move my needles out of the way. And if there were to be a hole, it would happen right here because this is the end of where we picked up our flap stitches and began working across our instep stitches. But you can see there is no hole there at all. On the other side, we're gonna have a very similar picture. Again, if there were to be some sort of gap or hole, it would happen right here at the beginning of where we pick up our flap stitches and end our instep stitches, but there is no gap or hole there at all. So I hope you found this method for avoiding heel flap gap helpful. If you did, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you're ready to try this technique in a pattern, head over to the shop section of thechillydog.com and look for my Riptide socks. Until we stitch again, happy knitting!